personal risks. What, in your opinion, are the, the risks concerned with all this? And the repercussions well, that we'll face as a country if this keeps going on? Yeah. No, this, this can't go on. This is the second time um, I'm on your program um, to discuss a failure in governance and risk management. And this, in, in looking at it and reviewing it, and I made myself a, a, a table just like I would have done in something like Enron. Um, and um, it just reminds me, uh, it, it couldn't be a worse situation because there's so much conflict of interest. There's lack of transparency. There wasn't effective due diligence. There are ties between government and the private sector. And if that's the way that Malta does business with offshore funding into companies that might not be companies, um, I think that will impact very badly. And that comes on top of Moneyvale reviewing um, and um, downgrading, the potential downgrading of status of Malta. So I think Malta must really sort these things out. Mm -hmm. And what are the risks to the public, the Maltese public? Because obviously this is a healthcare issue also. Of course it is. Um, you know, it leads to a lack of trust. It's so easy to burn trust. It's so difficult to build trust. And I think particularly um, during this pandemic, but at all times, but, you know, particularly now, if the public don't have trust in the public sector, in hospitals, um, then um, I think it's pretty tragic. They're not going to listen. And if, for example, Malta had to go back into a shutdown, they, you know, are going to say, um, we don't believe them. Why should we? Um, and I think also capital flows coming into Malta. When you look at these sort of deals, okay, these deals are not above board. They look very problematic. Of course, that, that's the reading I've done. I'm not, I'm not acting for anybody. I, I would have to do a proper due diligence and review this. But linking procurement and concessions and everything and conflict of interest, it just fails every tick box of proper, you know, a, a proper acquisition. Um, and um, I think the government could not do worse in losing public trust. Mm -hmm. um, how do you resolve issues like this, in your opinion, Colin? The government must clean it up. They've got to bring in, I, I would say, given that this is international in scope, okay, um, Notwithstanding, I saw that Sturt had been taken over. I don't know anything um, about that, but that's yet a further thing that you've got new management in there, and we don't know the linkage between this and that. It could just be coincidence. I, I, again, I'd say appoint an international commission <laughs> and um, review exactly what happened. Review. Um, I've read your audit officer's um, report. Um, and um, it just doesn't look good. So I'd get an external body to come and basically tell it as it is. Um, if heads must fall, then so they must fall. And the government should, should do this as soon as possible. An independent, it, it should not be, again, partisan, it should be an external party coming and reviewing this. So once you start using parliamentary um, um, groups and committees, etc., it will become partisan and no one will believe the findings. But I would say this should really get cleaned up because what I'm seeing is a pattern in Malta, um, you know, from cryptocurrency to offshore funds flowing into the country to the assassination of a journalist and so on and everything she's written, Galatera. So um, I think that, um, you know, the, the grey listing. Malta getting a bad reputation is very bad for the people of Malta. People will not want to invest capital in Malta. You mentioned an external party coming in to, to sort this out. What, uh, in your opinion, would this sort of external party be? Um, out of point. Um, well, we've also got issues with audit firms, unfortunately, um, at the moment. 
but I would appoint um, an above board, an independent commission internationally. And, um, you know, this has been done um, for other firms and come in and review it. I guess you could use an audit firm um, and basically review all the documentation, get the entire story, get the government must agree to open up all its books, etc. There must be no sacred cows and come up with the finding, take the actions that the findings say. And, um, you know, it, it, you've got to do this. I mean, it's much better when you're in a crisis. Face it, don't hide things. Be transparent and get this over with. Uh, this reminds me, you know, of the story uh, which we all know about the frog. If you put the frog in hot water and, and heat it slowly, 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 but the frog will die. Um, and I think um, that's what's going on with Malta, and they must correct this as soon as possible. I thank you very much. I thank you, Colin, for joining us once again. Professor Colin Lawrence, um, a former director of the Bank of England and a specialist in governance and risk management. What are your thoughts after listening to all that? I think um, the professor is correct in stating that we have to get our act right and one should um, prospect in uh, getting what they got in South Africa which is called the Truth Commission basically a group of experts seeing our system seeing where we have failed getting out of the truth and moving uh, moving ahead we have come to a point in our democracy where we can't present ourselves to the world as something that we are not. What has happened during these past seven years, unfortunately, this is not the prototype Maltese people. The Maltese people always rose to the occasion when the time came for them to rise to the occasion. When there was the independence referendum, people voted for the truth. When we chose to become a republic, we voted for the truth. Mm -hmm. When we wanted to join the European Union, we voted for the truth. So yes, basically our people want the truth. Nobody agrees with the death or assassination of Daphne Caruana Galizia. No. That blotch has uh, marred our our nature. In fact, the story came to light through her blog. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Dr. G. My comments, Leah, is while obviously I agree with what Professor Collard is saying that this brings around bad reputation, bad reputation brings with it a problem on our economy and because people won't want to come and invest over here and that is a fact which we all know. What I do not agree with what Professor Collin is saying, however, if you allow me, is that he is seems to imply that we need some independent body of foreign experts and it makes us appear that we are not capable of doing it ourselves. With all due respect to Professor no, Colin... No, of course, of course. With all due respect to Professor Colin, we, are, we have always, as Dr. Dabona said, risen to the occasion. Maltese are a hard-working nation. We have worked hard. We, are, we, are, we, are, uh, we know what is good and what is bad. We know when we had to choose the truth. And I think that we are capable of doing it ourselves. Mm -hmm. As long as there is the goodwill to do it, we can do it ourselves. If you ask me the honest truth, one of the most embarrassing things for me at the moment as a Maltese person is, especially myself, who, is very, who has very much at heart um, justice and interior affairs, is that I have a Venice Commission which comes to tell our Minister of Justice what he should do. We know what we should do. Mm -hmm. We have always known what we should do. The framework and we are is in capable, place. And we are capable of doing it, provided we have the will to do it. Mm -hmm. The Venice Commission, Leah, is nothing more than a body created by the Council of Europe to give advice to those countries who are not meeting European standards. Mm -hmm. Malta knows how to meet European <laughs> standards, and we are capable of meeting Euro European standards if we want to meet European standards. Mm -hmm. And our Minister of Justice should not be humiliated and with him, therefore, 
also our country that we have a commission that comes to tell us how to cross the road. We know how to cross the road. We know what traffic lights are there for. We know what zebra crossings are there for, and we are capable of doing it. And we can rise up to the occasion, like we rose up to the occasion in the past, in order to move forward and to ensure that principles of good governance in this country will in actual fact be sound principles and which will be principles which will be applied. Mm -hmm. We have done it in the past, we'll do it again in the future. There has to be a will from the government though yes. also. There has to yes. be a will from the Maltese people. Yes. The government is nothing but a representative of the Maltese people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. If the Maltese people who are strong, hardworking and intelligent realize the serious repercussions of not having good governance, then the people will understand, as we have understood in the past, that the importance of good governance is vital, is relevant for our reputation, is relevant for our businesses, is relevant for our economy. We have managed to move from the time of the Gigantia temples to create a nation which is great. And the future of our country is great, as long as we have the political will, power, persuasion, determination, which I'm sure we can have and which we can find to do it. Thank you. We're joined by uh, Dr. Andrew Borch Cardona. Good evening, Dr. Borch Cardona. Good evening, Leah. Thank Good you evening, very much. Good evening, Edward and Joe. Hi. Good Hi, Andrew. Thank Long you. time no see, guys. Eva. Yes, yes. <laughs> um, basically, we're speaking about a very serious situation, a very controversial situation. Uh, we spoke earlier today, Andrew. What, what are your thoughts today after we've seen uh, Vitals and Stewart and the situation again in the press over the last few weeks, quite a lot? Well, my thoughts follow what Joe's just been saying. I've only been linked in for the last bit of what Joe was saying, how the country shouldn't be embarrassed by the findings of uh, the Venice Commission, etc. Um, I, I don't know the context of what Joe was saying, but... I, I fully agree. I don't wish to be embarrassed by this government's total um, way of ignoring the basic, very basic precepts of the rule of law and good governance. It's not, we're not embarrassing ourselves. Our government is embarrassing us. And the political will has to come from everybody, obviously from ourselves, from the Nationalist Party, from the opposition, from the government, from the people. But primarily it has to come from the people. But let's get back to, to Vitals. Vitals is actually a case in point. I mean, when, you, when one looks at even the, the top headlines of the National Audit, National Audit, uh, the Auditor, as a report, I mean, it's clear the whole thing was set up with, I was almost going to say criminal intent, but I don't want to get a libel case. But yes, it was criminal intent. Let's be obvious. Let's be clear about this. This whole thing was set up in order for people to make money. And the people who did it either are complete fools because they didn't realize what was happening around them, or else they were in on it. Now, if you're going to tell me Edward Chiklun is a complete fool, well, I mean, frankly, he's the man who said he's paid peanuts. When you pay peanuts, you know what you get. But I mean, that's Edward Chiklun. He can live with his own conscience. To say that Conrad Mitz is a complete fool, well, I mean, Conrad Mitzi's name has come up in every shady deal that this country has been embroiled in by this bunch of crooks. Mm -hmm. Is he a fool? Is he a willing fool? Was he a useful fool? Was he in it up to his scrawny neck? How do I know? Mm -hmm. I'm not Ian Abdullah with all the files available to me. Mm -hmm. um, um, Ian Abdullah, sorry about that. <laughs> do stay with us, Andrew. Do stay with us until we close. Um, in fact, Andrew mentioned a point that I'd like to bring up. I mean, the same people seem to feature in quite a lot of these um, shady deals, the electro gas scandal, the ITS project uh, with the DB group. What, what are your thoughts about that? Andrew's absolutely correct. Uh, it's where there, where there was money to be made, there was Conrad Mitzi. There was Casco, that is Keach Kembry, and uh, what I call the triumvirate in, in Castile. These people, nobody had ever heard of Casco, and nobody have, uh, has ever heard of Conrad Mitzi before the 2013 election. They were dumped on the Maltese people just before the 2013 election. And 
today we realize that they were dumped on us in this way so we wouldn't have the chance to understand where they wanted to actually go and arrive at. Today, after seven years, we know they have raped our country. They got us home and dry. In all deals, not only the vitals, not only the DB, not only the permits of the, the, the big tower instead of the exchange, all these deals have all been done for these people to enrich themselves. Mm -hmm. And they have enriched themselves at the expense of our people. But worse than the expense of our people, at the expense of our reputation as a nation. Yes, and at the expense of our future. And at the expense of our future. Uh, yes, that future. is what I find even more worrying and more annoying and more disturbing, at the expense of our future. The time passes very quickly, but to close, Dr. Giglio, uh, we spoke about uh, bringing the hospitals back, repatriating the funds. Uh, how long do you think this process is going to take? <laughs> it's difficult to answer that question. Yeah, very difficult to answer that question. And as I explained to you, while this process is important that it takes place and that it happens, provided, as we stated, that there is the will for it to happen. I think, as I stated at the beginning, that we should now also start discussing where our health service is going to go. Mm -hmm. As an idea, the idea of a public-private partnership in health is a good idea. It's a good idea which helps the economy, which creates jobs. But now we have to think where we're going to go to, how we're going to take it. I already mentioned two examples, the medical students, the nurses. I mentioned medical tourism. I think that, too, is something that is relevant. Should we, if we're going to take back over this health ourselves, should we start now doing private partnerships limitedly to aspects of our hospitals mm -hmm. and our polyclinics, for example? Should we do private partnerships only insofar as um, human resources are concerned? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Should we do it only insofar as uh, human resources and maintenance are concerned? Mm -hmm. Should we have private public partnerships outsource, in our head? Outsource the and back start office. Outsource. Already we have mm -hmm. certain outsourcing that is happening in our health department. Mm -hmm. How can we improve on this? Mm -hmm. How can we make it better? Mm -hmm. How can we ensure that ultimately, <clears throat> now that this contract everybody understands what it is, our health of tomorrow is even better, definitely than what we have today because it's a mess, but it is even better. Our health policy and our health vision for our country is even better than what we have managed to create so far. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope you um, found this discussion interesting. Thank you for being with us. Thank you to doc uh, Dr. Andrew Borchkadona and our other guests, Dr. Giglio and Dr. Edward De Bono. I'll see you next week and I wish you a lovely weekend.